Hello everybody, this is 13 with Superior Mobile by 13. Today we are doing round two of experimentation of can I swap my Kona EV radio and today we're doing the radio that people actually care about which is the 10 and a quarter inch screen. This is a navigation amplified radio out of a Kona EV and we are gonna swap it in place of the non-amplified non-navigation radio in a Kona EV. Here's our AB comparison between the two radios. Obviously there's a significant difference between the two on their screen size and their capabilities. Here's the part numbers and information of a 2020 Hyundai Kona EV base model, non-amplified, non-navigation. Here's the information off of a 2021 Kona EV navigation amplified 10 and a quarter inch radio. This radio came from Lithuania, so it is part of the EU market, and this radio came from the American market. Comparing the back ends of these things, as you can see, we have the exact same plugs, but it is a different PCB layout. Both radios have these two plugs and that plug. They both have the blue plug. They both have the gray plug. This radio has a red and a yellow one, whereas this one has a white one. They both have the GPS antenna and they both have this rectangular black plug. Okay, here's the radio and the dash now. And upon the initial startup, it came up in the other language, but luckily all you had to do is select language and then I could pick English from the list. Radio boots up just fine. Once we click on the confirm, it tells you that you have the ability for blue link. The original radio did not have blue link. This one claims that it does. However, I am assuming that one of those plugs is the blue link plug, which of course is not in this vehicle. Since this radio is the EU spec, if we come up to the maps, we are stuck in Lithuania. You can zoom out all you want. Travel to the other side of the world over to Florida and as much as you try and zoom in it eventually stops and you can no longer zoom in and that is because if we go to the version information the software version is a European spec the model is a European spec the firmware is a European spec the navigation is a European spec but most importantly for that particular instance the map version is a European spec now my inkling is just to be able to say update and plug in a different version but for some reason the update key is grayed out so essentially the navigation although it works technically since I'm in the wrong portion of the world it doesn't actually work I've tried driving around in order to orient it and although the map responds according to the speed by adjusting the zoom it doesn't actually change the location because the map data simply isn't there steering wheel controls still do work however of course we do not have audio output because this is an amplified radio and there is no amplifier in the vehicle. If we go to the home screen, we do have EV features, which is pretty cool. But again, unfortunately, because it is so integrated with the navigation with the GPS, this screen is no longer very enjoyable because it is stuck in Europe. It does correctly relay the amount of charge left on the vehicle along with some of that data, which I didn't want to lose from the original radio. However, an interesting thing is this radio does not know that the car is not running right now. So every Every once in a while it'll pop up with a battery discharge warning even though the engine is officially on right now. So although that may not be that big of a deal, where it comes into play is that usually when you click this range you can actually find the breakdown of the information of how your battery is being used. But in this case, when you click it, it says you have to start the vehicle. And that is particularly concerning because that means that although we're getting some of the information about the EV system, we're not getting all of the information about the EV system system because what I really want is that energy consumption screen but if I click it then of course it gives me the same error so that's a little disheartening but I don't know if that's because it's the EU spec or if it's just simply a different trim radio another EU spec quirk that is just really bothering me as an American is because it lists the day first and then the month another thing is that because GPS time is activated the 4:33 p.m. is the time in Europe currently it's about 10 30 a.m. here in Florida I can of course disable that and then program into here and I can set the hour to what it should be and that's fine and well and dandy but of course it doesn't change the order of that month day. So in some of these settings if we go to like parking safety for example we're getting an error here and this vehicle doesn't have parking sensors so of course they're not going to work. If I bring up the camera settings the fact that I can actually use this extend rear camera use thing that's actually a really cool feature. All that that means is that when I go into reverse you can see that we get the backup camera. It does all 
also irritatingly bring up that GPS thing there and I can go right back to park. So the backup camera works, but when I'm actually driving around, what that does is it keeps the backup camera on for a few extra seconds as I go into drive and drive away. And the original radio didn't do that. This allows you to dial in some settings on the backup camera, which again is a feature that was not on the basic radio. Drive mode settings are disabled, as you can see, because those settings don't exist on this vehicle. Within the climate screen, we actually have additional options that the original radio didn't have. If I change my little knob right there, you can see that it does bring up a different display there. So it is still communicating effectively, just a different visual display. And again, it's an improvement on that visual display. And the fact that we have these new settings where we can have auto defog or auto dehumidify or activation on washer fluid use for whatever value that is. What this radio is doing is actually taking the existing HVAC platform and making it more integrated and more useful to the user. So that's pretty cool benefit. So although this is a Blue Link capable radio, I, again, I do not have Blue Link in this car. So there's really nothing that you can do as far as these radio settings. I mean, you can make it come up with a picture that makes you happy and you can change your name to show up when you start the radio. But ultimately, there's no settings that this radio will be able to control in this base model vehicle. Going to the climate screen reaffirms what I was saying earlier is it's just a nice visual display of what's going on below as far as having interaction with the climate controls down there and easy control access to those settings. I'm not even going to mess with Blue Link or Hyundai Live, but obviously it's there. Now, something that really caught me off guard is that if I go to the media, then I can actually just pull up all of the media files. These are movies that are on a flash drive that I have plugged into the factory USB port right there. And what really blows my mind is here we have an MKV file and I can actually pull this up and play the movie in the vehicle. And I played this movie while driving around the block the other night. So I think that's because the radio doesn't know that the engine is on and that I'm driving because there's in my mind, no way that this radio, a factory radio should allow you to watch movie while in motion. Now it didn't support all the video files and it should be mentioned that in the settings, you can make it either be a full screen for the video playback or you can have it maintain the aspect ratio. So of course we want to maintain the aspect ratio for replaying video. But what's interesting is when you do that, you've got about seven and a half inches from corner to corner of this video playing. And on this original radio, it's actually only about seven inches from corner to corner. So you're only gaining about half an inch diagonally of video screen. The real benefit of a wide screen like this is it allows you to play a video on that side and then have navigation running on the right. And originally I had it set up like that, but uh, I know this is a really ridiculous scene right now. So just try and ignore it for a second. So originally the video is offset to the side and then over there is the navigation. That would be really beneficial in any normal circumstances. However, because the navigation was all wrong and set up in Europe, I found a way to just remove it so we could get this centered in the screen. So all in all, there's a lot of potential with this radio swap, but swapping a EU spec radio into an American vehicle is definitely not a good idea. Hopefully I'm able to get my hands on one of these as a US spec and I'll be able to make another video for you. Again, as a full disclaimer, this is just one particular radio model installed in a replacement to one particular radio model. And the Kona just decided to throw a lot of different radios and a lot of different trims with a lot of different weird compatibility issues. So we're still kind of just figuring this out. Good, valuable lessons being learned with this experiment. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, guys. This is 13 with Superior Mobile by 13. I'll talk to you later. See ya.